Welcome to another episode of Game Boy Roulette, where we take a look at randomly chosen games from the Game Boy Library. Dennis the Menace. Wow, no one under the age of 25 remembers him. Let's turn the clock back all the way to 1951, and the debut of a comic strip called Dennis the Menace. Dennis was a young boy who, as the name implies, caused a lot of issues for people around him, especially his cranky neighbor, Mr. Wilson. It was one of the more popular comic strips, enough so to get a ton of adaptations over the years. A live-action TV series in the early 60s, a cartoon in the mid-80s, a second cartoon in 1993, and more. But it's the 1993 live-action movie that's our subject today, which was a massive financial success, grossing nearly four times its budget, although it wasn't exactly a critical darling. But as we've said so many times, it was a thing in the 90s, and therefore a video game was made of it. The Dennis the Menace video game was made for three consoles, Super Nintendo, Game Boy, and strangely enough, the Amiga. As you would expect, the SNES and Amiga versions were straightforward platformers, made by Ocean Software, while the Game Boy version was a scaled-down port created by Citizen Software, a company that almost exclusively made handheld games based on popular franchises. Not a whole lot else to say. This is the kind of game we've seen a hundred times before. So here's some trivia. In the same month and year that Dennis debuted, a a completely unrelated comic, also called Dennis the Menace, was released in the UK, also about a young boy who causes havoc. Why the hell are there two Dennis's? Dennis Psy? What's the plural of Dennis? The box art is Dennis about to really ruin someone's day. He was supposed to be a lovable rapscallion, but I'm pretty sure he's about to puncture George Wilson's eye, which in my opinion tips a little bit further into manslaughter territory. What trouble will Dennis get into today? Slingshots up, it's Dennis the Menace. Uh, Ketchum Enterprises. I think that's the name of the guy who originally created Dennis the Menace. Dennis Me Menace. That is that supposed to be an H that looks like that looks like Dennis Me Menace. Anyway, Dennis the Menace. Let's do this. Slow transitions, baby. Oh God. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was about to say that's a pretty dark way to start this game. Anyway, the Wilson house. What the? Uh, what's what's going on with uh, Mr. Wilson up there? He looks really pissed. All right, I have no idea how to uh, play this, but it's looking pretty basic. Jump and shoot. We have a slingshot and a blowgun and a boxing glove. What? And there's a star and another star. Mr. Wilson's house looks huge. I love how cartoony. Dennis animates here. Oh, wait a sec. Stop. Oh, it's like... Oh, it's one of these games where everything's an ice level. Is that a turtle tarantula? What... What is going on with Mr. Wilson's eyebrows now? What? What is that? Why is he up there constantly watching, judging me? All right, so what are we looking for? I assume now since there was a key... The goal of each level is get the key and leave the leave the place. It's a little hard at this point to tell what is a background element and what isn't. I'm gonna have to backwards engineer what the hell I'm doing, aren't I? Come on, Dennis, let's go menace someone. Ow! Oh. Okay, yeah, I guess it was just find the key and leave. Spooky forest. Hey, there's a dog. And now the dog is dead. I feel like this is a game I've played a thousand times before. These types of games were probably the most common thing in the 90s. Take just some franchise, in this case Dennis T. Menace, put it over an utterly generic collectathon platformer, and you're done. Another great example is Home Alone, which apparently the uh, reviews of Dennis the Menace were like, they basically just remade Home Alone with a licensed character. <laughs> okay, what am I even grabbing here? Uh, an X thing. I did something. Okay, I'm gonna have to look up how the heck, like, the mechanics in this game work. Because so far, the game has done nothing to explain them. We're just kind of running around doing things until the game tells us we've completed it. That thing down there is blinking now. Is that a good sign? Apparently it is. Okay, I'm gonna go check. What the heck are you supposed to do in this game? 
Ooh, this is interesting. Okay. <laughs> I have found things. First off, the goal of each level is just gather the X coins, which are just the X coins, and get to the end of the stage. There's no, like, actual lore explaining what they are. They're just how you beat the video game. And second, the person who did the guide for this game that I looked at said that the game keeps glitching out at level uh, 16, and so he can't actually complete it. And so he called for anyone who had played it and beaten it to contact him, explaining how to do it, and no one ever did. That's not a good sign. God, this is so generic. It's not bad. It's not something where I'm like, oh my god, this is the worst thing I've ever played. Oh, whoops. Okay, maybe it is. But it's just so... I've played this. I've played this so many times. You've played this so many times. Sometimes it's called something different. There's not even a pretense of trying to, like, connect it to Dennis the Menace. Overall canon, I guess? Does Dennis the Menace have canon? It's just, here's Dennis. Go collect the power-ups. Go get the magical crystals, Dennis. That'll help you progress in this video game. Like, look at this. What does this have to do with Dennis the Menace? There's also three types of ammo, but it seems like all it does is make it a little more complicated to kill things. God, there were so many games like this. Another great example of a game like this is the Home Improvement game. Don't know if they made a Game Boy port of it, but on the Super Nintendo, it was just, all right, you're playing as the Home Improvement guy, Tim Allen, whatever his name was on the show, and now here you fight dinosaurs and have magical chainsaws and stuff. It's just, it feels like the same games, just with a slightly different protagonist stretched over them. Well, at least there's an infinitely respawning one up. Part of me does want to keep playing to see, oh, maybe it gets better. But deep down, I know it doesn't. Deep down, I know, and I think you know, and I think we all know. This is as good as it's going to get, and that is not very good. Sorry, Dennis. I think Mr. Wilson wins this time. What am I supposed to say about the video game equivalent of the hum of a fluorescent light? Usually in these post-gameplay reviews, I'm able to latch onto something in the game to talk about, whether high quality or low quality. But in this case, where do I even start when the game is so unremarkable, so generic in every way, that reviewing it is like trying to review a blank sheet of paper? This is the kind of game we saw over and over again in the 90s. Companies got their hands on some IP, slapped it over the most standard platformer gameplay, and called it a day. Maybe it was a collectathon like this one, maybe a standard side-scrolling platformer, maybe had some combat mechanics, but there were so many of them out there, and very few of them ended up being any good. So what do I talk about? The generally okay if uninteresting gameplay? The slightly above average graphics for the Game Boy, but nothing we haven't seen before? The complete lack of anything connecting it to whatever passes for Dennis the Menace canon, instead just throwing in a bunch of stock video game enemies? The collectibles not even being on theme, leaving us wondering why Dennis is collecting large coins with X's on them? The fact that apparently the game glitches out at one point and can't be beaten? There's nothing, not a single thing that this game does well enough or poorly enough enough to make it stand out in any way. I guess what I'm saying is that Dennis the Menace doesn't get a recommendation due to there being absolutely nothing about it that you haven't seen before. It's completely skippable, but even if you did play it, I doubt it would stay in your memory for very long. Now to go review something that's a bit more interesting, like paint drying. And that's all for another episode of Game Boy Roulette. Make sure to like the video, comment, and subscribe to follow the series as we continue to dig through the Game Boy Vault. I'm Brian J, and I'll see you next time.